Hello, welcome to another episode of Chat with Kat. I'm so excited to have real chats with real people about real life experiences. And today I have a guest. Her name is Sarah. You're going to learn a ton about her. She's a badass boss babe who helps empower women to have confidence in their business and in their life. I'm so excited to have you on today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited from the yeah. other side of the world. <laughs> I know. And just so you guys know, we've never physically met. We live in completely different countries. <laughs> yep. Which is also really cool. So just as we're getting started, I love for people to get a little bit of background, get to know you a little bit. So give us a little bit of insight. Okay. So I'm from Australia, obviously. Um, my name is Sarah, but I've shortened it to Sarah, S-A-I-R, to rhyme with hair because 25 years ago I started hairdressing, lots of Sarahs around, and it sort of just stuck. It it ended up being, I haven't nev never actually changed my name to that, but it just stuck. So now it's Sarah. And like you said, you're like, um, how do I pronounce that? I'm like, just Sarah, like as in, like Sarah shortened. So, um, so I was, I was a hairdresser for 25 years, um, owned and ran salons for that time as well. Um, and just recently, like in the last couple of years, um, sold the salon, my last salon and went on this big awakening, um, journey and have started coaching because, and a coaching for business, for creatives, not so much for just hair even though I do people, I do help people with hairdressing and salons and that kind of thing coming off the floor, but um, it's more creating cre creating a, a culture of um, creatives and stepping out of the fear and the and getting rid of the perfectionism and that kind of thing so you can step into your dream and live authentically so that you're not scared to like put yourself out in front of cameras and stuff like that. So that's what I'm really passionate about. So um, we packed up everything. We sold up everything. We sold our business, our car, our house, um, left our hometown last year. And we traveled with our kids. I have a partner and kids, um, traveled down the East coast of Australia for 10 months and just let it up, let it up to like fate kind of thing, if you, if you will. And yeah. just uh, our mm -hmm. intuition. And we just sort of traveled and learned so much along the way. And like I was saying to you the other day, um, people are like, are you having a midlife crisis? Because I'm 42. And I'm like, no, I'm having a midlife awakening. It's only a crisis if you stay asleep. Yes. <laughs> and so that was a huge yes. thing. So I'm like, I'm just going to let this let this play out. And where we found ourselves was down the bottom of Australia in Victoria in a beach town. Uh, I can walk the kids to school. It was just like everything that I sort of had in my in my dreams of what a dream life would be. And that's why now I, I help people to design their life to how, because we're the creators, we can design our life, but we forget that when we get stuck in those, in those yeah. patterns. All those cycles, yeah. those comfort zones of like, well, if it's yes. not broke, don't fix it. Yep. And all the titles too. So like I got to the stage where I was like a business owner, hairdresser, mortgage, I, you know, um, have a mortgage, a homeowner, um, partner, um, mom, you know, all these titles. But then when you're sitting there, you're like, who actually am I? Yeah. What do I actually like to do? What do I want to do? Um, and you get to this, this point where you're like, I, like, especially as you get older, you start to go like, you only have one life. Yeah. You've got to live now. You've got to do what you want to do now and step out of that and step out of that comfort zone. Yeah. And did you find that scary at first when you guys decided to like pack up, move, do all these things? Like what were the initial feelings you were having? But then how did it like oh, evolve <laughs> as you went on? Oh, I was shit scared. <laughs> totally scared. But the thing is too, is when you do get scared, that's the point where it kind of, fear is like a signpost. It's yeah. like it's it's not actually something to be um, worried about so much. It's actually like back in the day that fear was just to protect us. So it's a protective mechanism. It's a signpost. It's like, oh, there's a bit of danger here. But when you look at it and, if, and you look at the situation, you go, 
is that actually danger or is that just going to keep me nice and comfy here and keep me safe? Like I feel safe here because it's familiar. Right. So it's sort of like a signpost and then you can kind of decide from there. And that's what how I saw it. I was like, it's coming up, the fear's here, but is it actually keeping me safe to to like ignore that kind of thing? Is it actually better to push through it and push past my comfort zone? And that's what helped me keep, like keep going. I'm like, no, I do need to um, expand. I do need to grow. I need to do this. Yeah. And so how, did, how did that all evolve within your family dynamic as well? Like, were they all kind of on the same board or did you guys all have different experiences on that? I think we can learn from kids a lot because kids are like, well, yeah, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they teach me all the time because they're like, yeah, where are we going? <laughs> Yeah, and I and I love that about kids because they're just sort of open to all these opportunities. They haven't had the things that happen when you, as you get older, you have like memories of things where you're like, oh, last time I did that, yeah, that happened. So I, I won't try that now. You know that you have all these like references to go back to, whereas kids are like, hell yeah, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. So the the kids are really good. My partner's really good because he's he's really like straightforward yeah he's like we can always come back and be fine like you know he's just really straight like straight down the line and yeah. it's more me <laughs> that has the oh, oh. <laughs> yeah so, yeah so it was and it's it was it's been awesome like it's been a great experience I to mean, do something like that I love it I love it and then in your coaching I'd love for you to touch a little bit on that and just explain to the women out there that are are looking to connect with you, like how are you going to help them grow and evolve into their own confident woman? Yeah, so at the moment I have a group called Soul Gift Activation. And what that is, is to really hone in on exactly what it is that you love to do, what you um, are really good at, what the world needs and what you can be paid for all to sort of mixed in together. It's like the ikigai, the Japanese um tool to use to sort of work out exactly what it is that's that is your thing because a lot of the times like you might have say for me in hairdressing I have a lot of skills from that that I can actually take and use mm-hmm. elsewhere for a, a, a deeper passion so I kind of help people to bring all that all those things together all their skills plus what they love to do and create this awesome business that they can do and send out their medicine and magic into the world Um, because a lot of people are scared to do that too so I really delve into why they're scared the fear perfectionism limiting beliefs imposter syndrome there's so many things that that stop us from doing that and even just societal norms in general tell us that you know finish school get a job or go to go study get a mortgage married kids you know that it's the it's the usual cycle that we're we're sort of taught a lot of the time and then sometimes you get trapped in that and where you go like this is not actually how I thought my life was going to plan pan out and yeah. so I help people to sort of distinguish where they where they want to go and what they want to do and a lot of the time it comes back to business because I started out just helping people with perfectionism and fear but it, it it sort of turned around to business as well because it's one of my passions and it's something that I am good at as well. So it it, it comes through in that way. So I have the soul gift activation, but then I have a lot of free tools and stuff that I offer, like meditations that I've done to help uncover your your get your groove back. It's called Ooh. get your groove back meditation. So stuff like that. Um, and master classes on fear and per- perfectionism. Even getting yourself out on video. Because even if they have a business and they're they're up and running, it's their passion, they love it. What stops them is the they're scared of getting on video or they're scared of get, of being seen on Facebook or being judged. So that all stops, like puts all closed closed doors and big blockers up for their business as well. So I really help to like help them feel comfortable in themselves and go and fuck it. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna bring it out to the world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's just so fun to see like even where all of the things that we go through and we uncover on our own experience can then be used to help other people. 100%. Because that's a lot of the time when you 
go back into your past, you can see what you needed 10 years ago, five mm-hmm. years ago. You know, you can see where in the in your journey what you needed and then you can help others. And it's not really about, about being the guru on the top of the mountain. People don't want someone telling you what to do and being the big guru. It's about someone grabbing your hand and going, I've been there and I, I know I know an easier way, you know, an easier way to go and and guiding rather than like telling. Yeah. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Well, no one likes to be told what to do at the end of the day. No. Like some people love perspective and they love to get different opportunities or options. Um, But at the end of the day, we all are our own person and we know what feels good from within. We're just so connected from our own inner guidance system and our own intuition that sometimes it's hard to be like, am I saying yes to this? Am I saying no to this? Like, Yeah, yeah. That's a huge thing is to listen to your intuition. It's it's mm-hmm. we sometimes I think we forget to. And then you can look back and go, oh, I, I was, you know, I felt that and I didn't do anything about it. Yeah. So I think it's coming like, back to yourself is huge. Those gut punches you get when you know you shouldn't do something and then you do it anyway and you're like, ooh. You're like, damn, I should have listened to myself. <laughs> But it's cool that as you like grow in life and you start to reconnect back to yourself, like you understand what that means in the moment more. Yes. Yeah. Very true. You do. You start to understand yourself more and you can, and you can, and you start to know that feeling like, cause you can get it mixed up with anxiety and you can, you can kind of go, is that an anxiety feeling or is that my intuition? Like, is it telling me not to do it or is it telling me to do it? So once you start to notice a difference, you can go, okay that's telling me to do it or that's telling me not to do it yeah absolutely yeah and let's talk about awakening as we're on that topic and how life just shifts in that moment like what was that journey like for you yeah I've had a few which is it's 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 been like a up and down and up and down up and down and I think it will continue till I die yeah and then you don't know what happens. So it could just keep going. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, that's but true. It's been an up and down journey of like, um, yeah, down to the depths of like you feel depressed and down, really down and low and like what's the point of all this? And then you have things that can turn around in an instant. You feel absolutely like astounded at everything and then you can got dip back down again. It's a It's a process the whole time. Yeah, and that's a big thing for people to know, I think, because when you're on a high, you think you're going to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of the times you don't. <laughs> well, most of the time you don't. So it's it's about riding the waves and and knowing how to navigate those waves as you go. But yeah, I've I've had a few different times where and and sometimes it can be a big thing that makes it happen and it can be a small thing that makes it happen. Yeah. But one of the big things that made it happen for me was um in 2011 we were in Brisbane in, in Queensland and there was a 2011 floods and it flooded my house to the roof and lost all furniture, all clothes, like all, all your possessions really, like everything was done. Um, and uh, then I moved back to my hometown after that. And then when I got back to the hometown, I felt like the biggest failure. I felt like, um, cause I was 28 at the time. So I'd lo- like, I had no money, no possessions like I felt like I was just starting from scratch again and I was I just went buzz down and just went like what what's the whole point of this and then but in that made me realize how silly it is to like really put a lot of um a lot of value onto things it really made me go like you know designer clothes like if someone was to ask me, like, well, they did ask me, like, what do you want out of the out of house? Because we've got to get out of here because it's going to flood to the roof. It's just you, your animals, you know, people, the people. Like, there's nothing really. If photos are a big, big one or anything sentimental to you, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Anything else, you're like, take the bed, take the designer bedspread, take the designer clothes, yeah. take the bag. I don't give a shit. Don't care about them. And it really makes you see things a whole different view. Yeah. And I appreciate that I got that lesson. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a pretty powerful mm-hmm. thing to say even. 
is that you appreciate the lesson in that because there's a lot of people that go through different tragedies and things that are completely out of their control like all the tornadoes all the earthquakes all the fires like you name it um and they come out of it like in a totally different mindset and a totally different outlook on life so that right there itself is so powerful that you can use that to yeah. evolve and grow yeah but that took me many many years because I was in that mindset of like why that happened to me like you know like mm -hmm. a, a victim mentality of you know I've got to start from scratch now and you know and and feeling really down and feeling like a failure for many years yeah it's taken quite a while to actually pick back up but that's yeah. just one of the dips you know yeah absolutely and if you were going to speak to your dream client or somebody that you would absolutely love to work with, who would you be speaking to? Who would I be speaking to? <laughs> I'd be speaking to someone that is creative, that has like a really big passion that they have always done and too scared to come out and do it maybe because they were told not to do it by family members or friends and they just yeah. have kept themselves in a box and haven't actually know deep down inside is there and that it could help so many people if they did it right but there, there's something there that's limiting them that's stopping them from doing it and I would love to help that person to bring that out and just shine it out into the world that would be, yeah, my ideal client is someone that's just has, has it all there. That And that's a lot of people. A lot of people have, everyone has, you know, unique gifts to get to, to give to the world. But a lot of the limiting beliefs is what stops people from actually doing it. Yeah. And yeah, and that's, that's who I'm talking to. Someone that's, yeah, wants to bring out things to the world, but is too scared to do it. Yeah. Well, and like not knowing where to start and you feel that overwhelm and like where do you even start when you don't know where to start is yep, how and that too but well that and then that creates a fear as well because it's like I don't know where to start so I won't do it because it's yeah. the unknown mm. yeah. yeah and then yeah. that's a great point to lead us into something else is like how would you suggest to to move through the unknown is one one thing that helps me is two things can be true at one at the same time. So I can be scared shitless and I can still do it. So that helps me all the time, especially even just posting a video, like I said before. I can still be scared shitless. I can still be like, oh my God, I don't like my hair there or whatever, but I can still post it. So right. there's moving through through it. I think I don't think you'll ever get rid of like that that feeling. Like that, this, this, you know, I don't think you'll ever get rid of the full fear and the full like limiting beliefs in, in general because they different they come up at different times for different things. Yeah. But it's like having it as it can be still true, but I, I'm choosing to keep going. Yeah. Well, and a lot of people say fear and excitement feel the same in your body. And when I heard that, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm just excited. And then I just used it to like reframe some of those fearful moments because I've also heard in different facets of life like people are only actually scared of two things and that's dying and falling or something and all the rest is made up fears because when you actually yep. think about it if you ask yourself what am I truly actually scared of like sure yep. snakes sure spiders sure the dark but like is there actual any harm being done to you yes yeah, that's so true. And and a lot of the time after you've done something that does scare you and you've you've done you have done it, you feel different. Yeah. And it's that feeling that you're like, I actually did that, that builds the confidence, that builds that that sense of like, what can I do next? I wonder what yeah. I could do next. Yeah. It's little like you can either plant seeds of doubt or you can either plant seeds of belief. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And because a lot of the time too, your beliefs they turn into thoughts, turn into emotions. You know, it, it just goes down the line to your actions and then it you either get the same result every time and it goes back to your belief or you change your belief and you're going to take different, 
different actions, you're going to feel different, and then your result's going to be different. Yeah. There's so many ways to to change that and, and that kind of thing too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really interesting to see because, like, every experience will shape you and then whatever you take out of it will create a belief or a thought about yourself and then it creates an emotion. So when you feel that same experience starting to come up, you're like, oh, and a lot of people yep. go into that fight, flight, or freeze mode because they're like, I don't want to go through yep. that again. <laughs> yep. I'm I'm keeping myself safe here. <laughs> yeah. But in in general, you're not actually safe there at all. It's just because it's familiar. Right. So like in your comfort zone, you might think, yeah, no, I'm really safe here. It's like you're not because you don't want to be there. You actually want to be doing this. So you yeah. actually are not safe anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how we how we do that. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to speak on that you're passionate about, that you're excited about, that you want the world to know and you want to share with everybody? It's ma- Yeah, it's mainly mo- like the big message that I like to um, help people with is just be themselves. Like don't worry so much about what people think. Don't worry so much about what you look like. You know, just bring yourself out forward. And the more you do that, the more you're going to feel authentic, the more confidence you get. It just keeps on building and building from there. And so it's, yeah, it, life's too short to like to keep yourself small and keep yourself in a box. And I'm really passionate about helping people break out of that. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it makes you feel proud. Like they're your like little kids or, you know, watching people grow and evolve is like one of the highest honors that you get to participate in that. Exactly. And that's one of the big things for me that's that's helped me um, grow. And another version of, of me is having kids. Is what, When I had kids, I was like, I want to be a good role model for them so yeah. that they don't feel like they, they're going to get trapped into the, the usual box of society. I'm like, anything's possible, whatever you want to do. Like, and I, I don't care what they do. It's like, do whatever. And I, I really want to be that person that, they can see their mom. Oh, mom did that. So, you know, it yes. She, she didn't care. So, you know, I want to be that person. I don't want to be the a, a person that makes them feel like they have to be stuck in a box. <laughs> yeah, stuck in the matrix. Yes, in the matrix. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like a whole nother topic. I'm sure we could spend another whole half an hour on, I bet. Is yes. And breaking. I think we will. Yeah, breaking free. So with that being said, I think this is a great opportunity for us to just stop. We're not going to go into that today because you'll have to tune in for part two with us (laughs) as we go into breaking free from the matrix. And we get to talk about anything and everything to do with after you awaken, the way you see things, breaking free from the matrix, what it all means. So I just want to say thank you so much for coming on here today. Um, let people know too, and I'll put it in the show notes where they can connect with you. Yep. So I'm on Instagram at Sarah Z. So S A I R Z E E with an underscore. Um, Facebook is the Sarah Z Experience, um, and yeah, that's mainly. Uh, you, I, I've got a um, podcast as well, which is Hippie Soul Sessions, yeah. and a YouTube, which is Hippie Soul Sessions too. I love so it. That's where you're going to be coming on next time. Yeah. So hippie cool. Soul Sessions. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's awesome. So, so come connect with me. Love yeah, it. Yeah. Go connect with her, you guys. Go check out all her stuff. I've been sneakily creeping on her bit by bit here. And she has some amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff on Instagram. Haven't even made it to all the other platforms yet. Instagram's my baby. Um, but I'll keep that all in the show notes too. If you want to reach out to her, connect with her. Um, get into one of her groups, do some coaching with her and go and build your dream life. Like why wait any longer? You're here for a short amount of time. You might as well do it living a fulfilling life. Exactly. Thanks, Kat. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for being on today. And with that, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Chat with Kat. We'll talk to you later.